think it's probably about time to get started. So how's everybody doing? Yeah, good morning. All right, awesome. Uh, so I uh, am here to go talk to you guys about the time I use Ruby to crack my Reddit password, kind of. So my name is Haseeb Qureshi. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Earn.com, and I uh, am going to tell you guys a story. So I used to be addicted to useless websites. Uh, I still am, but I used to be too. And uh, you know, I, I'm sure you guys know what this is like. Uh, here's just an artist's depiction of what a useless site might look like. We all have our own poisons. You know, uh, I, you probably have something like this. Uh, also, I should note that I have no self-control to speak of. So uh, that's pretty bad. So uh, this is actually a, uh, it's kind of a nightmare, but this is actually, a, if you guys remember your English class from like high school or something when you read The Odyssey, uh, there's a famous story about when Odysseus tried to maintain some self-control by tying himself to his own mast. Uh, my problems are not quite this severe, but they're kind of similar uh, in their own way. Uh, and so, you know, keying off the story of, of The Odyssey, uh, I decided to use that ancient psychological technique that Odysseus used, which is locking himself out of his online accounts. Um, what he did was a little bit different, but basically, I, I feel like it's kind of the same, right? It's basically analogous. So um, let me tell you exactly what I did to try to spend less time uh, wasted on, on um, useless websites. So uh, on most of these websites, you have some kind of password system, and obviously you can change your password. So uh, what I did is I typed in just some random gibberish. So I just, I just grabbed my keyboard and started smacking away, uh, came up with something uh, sufficiently uh, weird, and entered that in as my uh, new password. Okay, uh, And of course, I don't remember what this string is, just a bunch of random characters. Um, I hold on to it, though, and I also changed my uh, account recovery email. So now I have a new password that I have no idea what it is. Also, I've changed my account recovery email to a throwaway email that I just created that I also threw away the password to. So there's no way to get my account back save for this password. Okay, so this password is the key to my kingdom. All right, so uh, what I do is now my plan is to prevent myself from having access to this password until some later date in the future, right? So, uh, you know, for now I want to go into crunch mode, I want to study, I want to practice, I want to do whatever it is I got to do that, you know, uh, these time-wasting websites are keeping me away from. Uh, so I need some way to receive this password at a later date. Now, unfortunately, normally the way you do this is uh, through this mechanism known as friends. Uh, not, not, not so, I, I figure there's probably some way to automate this, right? You don't need friends. Uh, so I go and, uh, uh, you know, use, use the Google to try to figure this out, uh, and I come across this great, wonderful website called Letter Me Later. Uh, and this kind of sounds nice, like, okay, it allows you to send emails at a future date and time you choose, you know, no friends required. Uh, this is pretty perfect for me. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit 1995 looking, but that's okay. You know, uh, maybe they're just really focused on what they do. So... Uh, so what I do is I go ahead and uh, I compose a new email to myself, I create an account, and um, what I do is I fill in a subject line, I'm going to call it password, because it's my password, set a date in the future when I'm going to email it to myself, uh, fill, put in my, my password in there, and I set it on to hide mode. And with hide mode, uh, what that allows me to do is not actually click on it when I log in to letter me later, uh, and so when it's hidden, I have actually no way to see it until it gets sent to me, right? So I got a, you know, foolproof. I know that I'm uh, just an awful human being. And so the only way that I will not access my password if there's literally no way I can get to it, okay? So for a while, uh, I actually used this system to keep myself from wasting time on uh, highly addictive, useless websites. So, uh, so my, my talk is actually not about you know, productivity techniques. This is a programming conference after all, so why am I telling you all this? Um, so actually, the story, the story is a little bit more involved. Uh, so I used this for a while. It was pretty effective. Um, but uh, later on, it ended up uh, coming back to bite me. So cut to two years later. Uh, so two years later, I was working at Airbnb, and I had a job. I was gainfully employed. Surprise, surprise. Um, I know I, don't, I didn't really believe it either, but that's fine. Uh, and so you know what that means. So I'm working at Airbnb. They, they have a huge Rails app, a uh, lot of tests. And of course, that means a lot of waiting. Uh, and waiting means that uh, it's time to start wasting company time. <laughs> so uh, what can I do to, you know, obviously, I can't do work while the test suite is running. That, that would be silly. Um, so what I do instead is I, I want to go and, you know, get back into, uh, get back into some time-wasting activities. Uh, so I want to go log back in to, uh, to this website. So I go back to Letter Me Later. I remember that I, you know, I locked my password away. Go back to Letter Me Later. Go retrieve my password. And it's been a while. It's been like a couple years, actually. So I guess I, I kicked the habit for a good bit. Um, but now it's time to you know, go back and get another fix. So when I log back in, I realize uh, that it's still grayed out. That's kind of weird. 
because, you know, I, I think, you know, usually I'd, I'd send it to myself like a month later at a time, you know, like give myself a period of time to just focus and then a little bit of time to, you know, get, get back to the candy. Um, and I realized, that, oh, shit, uh, I scheduled it for 2018, the last time that I, that I put this there. I guess I didn't remember, but I'd gotten like so annoyed at myself. Uh, that I actually set like some dates super far in the future, just be like, screw you, Hasib, like you need to get a grip on yourself. Uh, and I was like, uh, I, I can't wait that long. This test suite isn't that slow. Uh, so, <laughs> I so I I, I, I got to think, okay, maybe there's maybe there's some way around this. So, uh, he, right here is letter me later. Here's the the actual real website. Um, and so I you know I can log into my account. And I can see here this thing is hidden. There's no way for me to see it. It's scheduled for June. Um, other than that, I'm 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 screwed. Um, and so as I was clicking around on this, I realized, uh, I, I was about ready to give up, but of course you got to try a few things first. Um, I realized that uh, there's this, there's a search bar here. Okay, well, uh, what can I search for? So maybe I can search for my name and see if my name is in there. Uh, it's not, so it's not indexing my name. All right, fine. Um, now, uh, what if I search for A? Okay, so that popped up. Right, so uh, maybe, maybe uh, it might be looking for subject lines, right? And uh, so you can ascertain that pretty quickly. If I type in password, I can see, okay, yeah, it's definitely, it's indexing the subject line, that makes sense. But remember, the body of my, of my, uh, my email was just the actual password, right? So if I search for a letter that's not in password, let's look, look for E. E is not in there, okay, what about one? One is not in there, what about two? Two is in there. Okay, so what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? All right, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's think for a second. So I think what's going on here, uh, correct me guys if I'm wrong, uh, but I have a way to do substring queries into my password. I have an oracle. And my oracle will basically give me this query, right? Uh, it will tell me if the body plus the subject, the subject was password, the body was the actual password itself, if any of that concatenated together includes uh, any string that I ask it. Okay. So when I realized this, uh, I ran home. Uh, I, was, I was off work at this point, so I didn't just run home from work. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I ran home, uh, busted out a piece of paper and a pen, and was like, okay, let me see if I can figure this out. How can I retrieve my password? So here's the algorithm. All right, let's think about this like, uh, uh, think about it Wheel of Fortune style, okay? So I have uh, this, this big long thing, and uh, I have this subject at the top and the body down here, uh, and I don't know any of the characters in the body, but I do know the characters in the subject. Right. You can imagine that I have like a word bank, and the word bank is all the letters, except I've already, you can imagine I've already tried the letter's password, right? Because if I do a substring query for P, and I find that it returns true, I don't actually know if it's true because it was in the body or if because it was in the subject, right? The subject would automatically give a hit. But if you think about it, if I try all the letters that are not in password, then I know for certain I've hit a letter that is only in the body and not in the password. Okay, so. If I just keep trying letters that are not in the string password, eventually I will make a hit. Once I make a hit, I know I'm in. I have one of the characters somewhere in my password, okay? Uh, on average, this will take, actually, it, it won't take A over two guesses, it'll take somewhat less, but you can imagine it sort of being somewhere in the middle of the alphabet, I'll try letters until I get, get a hit. Then what I do is I try to append another letter and do a longer search, because I know that, you know, that, that letter plus the letter after it will be a valid substring. And so I keep just iterating through every single letter, including the, the letters in password, because now any letter can be uh, appended to this to create a substring. And I just keep going down one by one until I find the next character. And on average, I'll find the character somewhere around the middle of the alphabet. Uh, and so then I just keep repeating that. And every single time, it's going to take A over two guesses, where A is the size of the alphabet, um, until I finally have a letter where, I can, where no other letter works. And if no other letter works, then I know I've fallen off the end. That's the end of this part of the string. Okay, so what that means I have is not the entire string, it means I have a suffix to the string, right? But I don't know where in the string I started with. So what I can do after that is I can just repeat the process going backwards, right? Instead of appending to the end of the string, I prepend to the beginning of the string. And I just keep going until, again, I fall off going in the other direction, and then I know, okay, cool, that should be my entire string. So. Uh, if I do this, now if you, if you think like uh, on, I sort of, this illustration is not exactly correct, because on the ends it would take A guesses rather than A over 2 guesses, because I have to know, I have to exhaust the entire search space and know, okay, there's no other letter that fulfills this string going longer. So, two A guesses for the ends, 
a over 2 times n minus 2 for everything in the beginning, because there are n minus 2 characters if you don't include the n's, uh, where a is the alphabet, n is the length. So if you assume that a is a, uh, if the alphabet is a through z and 0 through 9, all lowercase, because that's how you slam on keyboards. Uh, also, the password length is 22. Then uh, basically that means to do this entire thing, we'll take about 432 queries. That's actually doable. That's like, that's like a reasonable number of things that you can just, you know, you, you can just do entirely serially through API calls. Um, so let's do it. How does that sound? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to uh, create a uh, letter me now dot rb. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and open letter me now. Uh, that is, that's the wrong folder. Oh, it's because uh, I'm in the desktop. Live coding. Uh, and let's touch let me now rb. There we go. Okay, so uh, so first things first. I got to figure out how I'm going to actually uh, do this do this uh, querying, right? I need I need some kind of access to this oracle. So I'm going to go ahead and build that first. So um, so you can see here that the way this is set up, it's like lettermelatercom slash account.php and then a query string, and it's like QE equals the query, right? So if I change this query to AB, uh, then I can see QE becomes AB. Okay, so obviously this thing has no API, so I'm going to have to scrape this thing directly. That's cool. I can do that. So uh, let's go ahead and start this. So I'm going to create an API class. And uh, here I'm going to have a URL uh, that I use for the API class. And I'm going to remove this part so I can uh, put the query string in programmatically. So uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the Faraday gem, uh, which is just a nice, simple gem for making, uh, making HTTP requests. And uh, I'm going to have a def self.get method, and it's going to take in a query. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Faraday.get, the URL, uh, and the second argument to Faraday is going to be the query string. And the query string here is just going to be QE, uh, should be the query. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to run this and kind of see if I can make this work. So let's open up Pry. Uh, I'm going to paste this code in, and I'm going to say API.get, uh, and let's say I'm going to search for the string uh, password. Okay. So that didn't work. Uh, and the reason why it didn't work, of course, is because uh, it's giving me a 302 redirect, and it's saying, you must be signed in to see this page. So obviously, I don't have any of my cookies. So uh, in order for this to work, I'm going to need to make sure I pass those in in the headers. So uh, that should be uh, easy enough. Just go to inspect, uh, go to network, grab uh, any, OK, let's go ahead and uh, refresh here. And we can go ahead and look, whoops, uh, we can go ahead and look and see, OK, we've got this cookie. I can just go ahead and grab it. I will make sure to sign out when this talk is done. Uh, that way this cookie is invalidated, but let's go ahead and do this. All right, so cookie equals this. Uh, all right, great. Uh, it's always good when they're storing the user ID client side. Um, <laughs> but oh well, you know, uh, any port in a storm. Um, all right, so, so first argument is the query string. Second argument is the, um, the headers. So I need to provide cookie as cookie. And now, if I am not mistaken, this should do uh, the trick. So if I do api.get uh, hello. Boom. All right. This looks like the actual web page. So this is a 200. Uh, and you can see, uh, da, 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 uh, yeah, uh, looks, looks good. Uh, I don't see my name anywhere in there, but I'm sure it's somewhere in there. OK, great. So uh, that's fine. Uh, now, of course, what I'm getting is I'm getting all the HTML of this web page. That's kind of not really what I want. I want to know, uh, I want to somehow know, like, did this query return true or false? So the way that I can figure that out is uh, the easiest way is to just look at, OK, in the HTML that comes back, is there some unique string that I, can, that I can find that will uniquely identify that, yes, in fact, this returned true? So you can see here there are a few things that show up when uh, it, like there's scheduled. Uh, I don't think that shows up anywhere else on the page. There's also password. That doesn't show up anywhere else on the page. So let's just use password for simplicity. Uh, and we'll say, uh, instead of having the self.get, we'll have self.include uh, self query. And this will just return uh, get query dot include, because uh, I'm going to make sure this returns uh, a dot body. Uh, and if the, if the body of this HTTP request includes uh, the string password, then, uh, then I'm good to go. And so let's go ahead and uh, paste this in one more time. API dot include now, uh, A returns true, and uh, AB returns false. Cool. So I've got my Oracle. All right, so uh, now as I'm testing this, I'm not going to want to use the real Oracle because that's going to be really slow and make a bunch of HTTP requests. Uh, I don't want to do that to myself or to them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create just a stubbed API that I can use while I'm, uh, while I'm testing, and then I can sub that out later with a real API. So this one is just going to have a fake password, uh, which is just going to be some random characters. OK, great. Uh, and then we're going to have a def self.include, same interface. That's just going to be fake password.include uh, the query. 
OK. Uh, and so now I can use a stubbed API. So it's going to be much faster, right? I don't want to be making HTTP requests while I'm testing. OK, so uh, I need to build that algorithm. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have a password cracker. Uh, and the password cracker is going to, it's going to be stateful. It's going to take in the API. So we'll inject that dependency just to make things a little bit uh, easier. So we'll have uh, the API equal that. We'll also set uh, the password to start off as an empty string. And we'll successively find the password through different stages of this algorithm. Uh, and I also want to set the number of iterations so I can keep count of that uh, and initialize that to zero. OK. So what is this actually going to do? So we're going to have, uh, let, let's call it a crack method. And in the crack method, uh, we're going to sort of go through each of the steps of that algorithm. So if you remember, uh, the first thing we talked about was getting the first letter, right? And I need to like do some logic to figure out what the first letter is. So we'll just do that. We'll say find first letter. OK, great. Uh, actually, let's put a bang on it. Um, so find first letter. OK, so once I found the first letter, then I can keep building uh, forward, appending different characters and seeing if it works. So uh, we'll just call that build forward. OK, uh, once I've built all the way forward, I've fallen off the end of the string, then it's time to go backwards. Right? So then we'll do build backward. Uh, and then at the very end, I'll just return the password. So that's roughly the code that I want. Obviously, it doesn't do anything yet. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's fix that. Oops. OK. So uh, find first letter. So in order to find the first letter, I need to know the alphabet I'm working with. Uh, I also need to know uh, the subject line, right? Because remember, I'm not going to try any of the characters that are in the subject line, because they don't necessarily tell me the character is in the password. So let's just make those constants. So we'll say uh, subject line equals uh, password dot chars. Those are the, all the characters in the subject line, right? If you guys remember. Uh, and the, uh, the alphabet, uh, for the alphabet, I'm just going to use the letters. Uh, I'm going to use A through Z, uh, all lowercase, because I'm going to assume that everything was lowercase. If there was uppercase, this will fail, and I'll try uppercase as well. Uh, and I'm going to also do 0 through 9. Uh, 0 through 9, uh, and I need to splat that. Uh, and actually, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to shuffle all this just so that in case, uh, just, to, just to kind of make the numbers more uh, round in the distribution in case, you know, the letters are all on one side or something. Um, okay, cool. So that's my alphabet. I've got my subject line. Now, to find the first letter, I want to iterate through each of the characters that are not in the subject line, but still in my alphabet. Okay, so that uh, should be easy enough. So I'll say alphabet minus subject line dot each do character. Uh, and for each character, I'm going to uh, look it up in the Oracle. So I'll say at api.include uh, uh, char. So that's to check if this is the first character. I'll say if that's true, uh, then what do I want to do? If it's true, then I want to say at password equals uh, that character. So I have my first character, and then I can return. I can go in and, and uh, jump out of here. And if that completely fails and I don't find anything, I probably want to raise and say uh, could not find a first letter. OK. So uh, this should be able to find a first letter. Now, uh, all right, cool. Uh, now, one thing I want to do is I want to keep count of how many iterations I'm doing throughout this whole algorithm. So to make that a little bit easier for myself, I'm also just going to have an include method uh, that both does all the API calls, uh, but also logs the, the iterations. Uh, whoops, OK. Uh, I'll say at iterations plus equals 1. Great. And now instead of include, uh, API to include, I'll do just include there. So that should return the same thing, but just also handle all the logging for me. Cool. So, uh, all right, so that should handle getting the first letter. Now, what if I want to build forward? So to build forward, it's pretty similar logic, right? So I, now uh, I, I'm not worried about the subject line anymore. I just iterate through the entire alphabet. So I'll say alphabet.each do character. Uh, and for each character in the alphabet, uh, what I want to do is I want to see, uh, you know, try out the current password plus one more character on the end, right? So I'll say uh, query equals uh, at password plus char just appending it to the end of the, the current, currently known good password. So uh, once I have that query, I can say if include, uh, whoops, if include uh, the query, then, uh, then I know, OK, great, the password should be the query now. The query is correct. So I'll say add password uh, equals query, uh, take that char on. And uh, the, the easiest way that I, I'd like to just do this is do this recursively. And it's actually quite elegant when you do it recursively. Um, so what you do is you just build forward again. Uh, and once you're done with all the building forwards and eventually a build forward finally terminates, uh, then you just jump out of all the stack frames uh, and just return all the way back up. So because we don't expect the password to be very long, this is totally fine. Um, and this is actually just really nice. This is pretty much all you need uh, to implement building forward. Now to build backward, uh, because remember we have to, uh, whoops, uh, build backward. 
to build backward, we basically do the same thing, except, uh, so we can just, you know, copy this code right here. Uh, but instead of the password plus the char, we prepend the char to the password. So we just flip this around. We say char plus add password. Uh, and instead of build forward, we build backward. Okay? Um, and I think this should basically do the trick. So, so provided that we're, uh, we didn't mess anything up, which is quite likely, um, but let's go ahead and see. So we can put uh, password cracker dot new, uh, pass in the stubbed API, just so we can see what's going on, uh, and call dot crack. Okay, uh, let's uh, cross some fingers. All right, let me now, let's see what happens. Oh, that, uh, was that it? Uh, yeah, that's it, okay, cool. So that, that seemed to work with uh, the stubbed API. Uh, that was a little bit, uh, a little bit underwhelming. Okay, so hold on, hold, hold your applause, hold your applause. Um, so uh, that's pretty good, uh, but we like to have some more logging, right? That was a little bit anticlimactic to just have that thing just plop out on the screen. So let's um, let's let's get a, let's get a little bit more context going. So we'll, we'll put here uh, cracking password, uh, beep boop. Okay, cool. So I like I like my I like my programs to talk to me and sound like computers. Um, all right, so find first letter. So we'll put uh, found first letter, uh, and we'll put uh, the at first letter right there. Okay, so uh, then we'll say uh, puts building forward, okay, so it's, uh, here it's building forward, then we'll put building backward, builds backwards, and then it, at the end it'll say, uh, congratulations, uh, your password was found in uh, at iterations, iterations. Okay, uh, and then uh, basically uh, as I build forward and build backward, I want to always mention once I, once I say, okay, great, your, your password is elongated, uh, let's just print out the password. So we'll just put uh, at password. Uh, every time that happens. So cool. Now, one thing before we before we actually run this, uh, you know, we're all engineers here. We notice there's some code duplication. Uh, let's let's refactor this thing. Let's try it up. Uh, so all right, I, I think there's there's a nice way to do that. So we can instead of doing build forward and build backward, we can just have one method called build. Uh, and build uh, bang goes on this side. Uh, build will just take an argument that's like forward. Okay, we'll have a keyword argument, and we'll just say uh, if forward then we'll uh, append the char to the end of the, the password. Otherwise, we'll say uh, it's a char plus add password. We'll prepend uh, if it's not forward, if it's going backwards, right? Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, and then basically, instead of uh, doing this build forward, we just build uh, and we pass forward whatever forward was originally. Uh, and now we can just delete these, the two of these. Uh, oh, whoops. Yeah, we can just delete the old one. Uh, and now instead of build forward, this just becomes... Uh, this just becomes build, oh, whoops, uh, build forward true, and this becomes build forward false. So uh, now we should be able to try this out with the real API. So let's see what happens. All right, fingers crossed. I uh, hope the internet here is good, because otherwise we'll be in trouble. Um, all right, here uh, goes nothing. Cracking password, beep, boop. All right, it's talking to us. Here we go. Found first letter. First letter is J. Uh, here we go. Coming in. J2. All right, this is exciting. This is exciting. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, I, this is completely out of my control at this point. It's just all, it's all up to the internet connection. Uh, okay, all right. It's, it's going. Look at that. We got a 2492. Uh, there's a little bit of symmetry there. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, we got, a, we got a G. Things are, things are moving. Um, I don't actually remember what my password is, so I'm, I'm just as uh, clueless as you guys are. Uh, all right, cool. It's, it's still building forward. It's still going. 2-9, okay. I think it's like 20-something characters, so this, we, we, we're not going to be here all day, I promise. We're going to get out in time. Uh, okay, okay, good. I'm, I get worried when it sticks there for too long, so I'm like, shit, did one of the API calls fail? Um, all right, J, nice. It's going, wow. Right, still going, yeah. All right, how are you guys doing, by the way? <laughs> doing all right? Yeah, we've got we've got, we've got a minute here to to just kind of chat and check in with one another. Uh, all right, oh nice. It's coming off the end. R P O. Okay. Oh no. No, please, please don't. Oh, okay, okay. So it's it fell off the end. Now it's going to build backwards. It's, it's figured out that's the the complete suffix, uh, and it's building backwards now. A. Uh, okay. Got the I. Things are moving. This is good. It's a good sign. And this is hundreds of API calls made serially. None, none of this is paralyzed. So that's uh, this, is, this is this is poor poor guys are running their servers. Um, 
<laughs> OGI. I, I kind of suspect nobody's uh, actually at the wheel right now, but that's fine. Um, you know, maybe, maybe in a few days when they check the logs, they'll see what the hell is going on. Um, OK, uh, ASD, uh, G, uh, OK. Uh? Oh, and that's it. 403 iterations. Oh my god. We did it. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, that's so that feels so good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So, uh that was me cracking my password. Now note, uh, I just want to quickly uh, go back to the math. So we decided that it would take 432 expected queries just doing the math straightforwardly. And uh, our actual number was uh, 403. So we were within 10% of uh, the actual answer. So holy shit, math actually works. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, was, you know, sometimes it doesn't. So that's the thing about math. Um, all right, so uh, takeaways. Uh, I, uh, this is mostly just a funny story, but uh, I felt like there was something, there was something here. Uh, so the, the cool thing, at least to me, uh, this was actually the first problem that I really actually had other than unemployment that I solved through programming. Uh, and like it's actually kind of a magic moment in a programmer's life when there's like something that is like just broken or lost or just like you can't do that's not you know your job related or you know launching a web app or whatever right I think we kind of get acclimated to that sort of thing um, but the idea that like I, you know I felt like I'd lost my keys in a desert or something like, like in just a way that was totally unretrievable uh, and with the power of programming uh, I could fix it. I could solve it. I could do this amazing thing that uh, before I was able to program, I was never able to do. And um, that's just, it's just kind of awesome to have that power. And I think as programmers, it's easy to, to kind of get complacent or get pissed off at our tools or our abilities. Uh, but there's something really awesome and magical about that that I think, uh, you know, it takes an experience like that to really drill that in and, and drive it home. Um, and I think it's just pretty crazy that uh, we can do shit like that. So uh, that's, that's it for me. Just wanted to share that story with you all. I'm Haseeb Qureshi. I work at Earn.com, which is a blockchain company. You should check it out if you haven't heard of it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at at Haseeb. Uh, you can read my blog, where I write about uh, this and other stuff, at HaseebQ.com. And uh, thank you so much for listening, guys.